So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Outdoor Living. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I installed these pavers from start to finish. You'll notice there's a lot of cuts, and I'm gonna show you different ways that I made those cuts, and how I made a more accurate cut so I could get it right the first time. This is my third time doing pavers, and I'm actually pretty happy with the result. So I try and give the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your guys' time. This is a pretty long video, but I had a lot of information including mistakes I made to help you guys so you don't make the same mistakes as I did. So let's get to it. So you guys saw the way that I did the pattern for my pavers. You can also do this pattern, which is very common as well. So as far as laying pavers, guys, the foundation you put down before laying the pavers is the most critical part. So I was able to get rid of this extra material pretty easily because I had laid quarter inch minus gravel in my backyard about six years ago. And that stuff compacts really well, but it's also easy to remove if necessary at a later date. But irregardless, the easiest way I've found to remove dirt is to grab either a pick, or in my case, I use this two prong hoe to break up the top layer of dirt and then remove it with a flat shovel. So when I installed my patio, I actually uh, had added some plastic drain pipe and I put a little footer in to hold it in place so it wouldn't walk away from the patio. I broke this out with a sledgehammer and then just used a pick to pry the pieces up so I could remove it. Using a sawzall, I cut that drainage tube back even with my horseshoe pit. I had ran a half inch PVC in that drainage tube in case I wanted to water anything in a potted plant at this end of the patio. So I ended up cutting that and gluing a 90 degree fitting on it with a threaded cap so I could remove it for future use if necessary. So the other critical to laying pavers is making sure your water is going to flow the direction you want it to. Right here I wanted everything to flow from the raised planter down towards the cool decking and then away from the pool. Now because I don't do this every day, this did take me a little while to get it the way I wanted it. And like I said, laying the foundation correctly is the most critical part to laying pavers. So using some stakes, I ran string line all the way through the center of where I was going to lay the pavers. Then I made sure that string line was level. Then using my tape measure, I measured the distance from the string line to the ground. I started at about two and a half inches over on this side. And as I went down, I gradually wanted it to increase to about three and a half. So I had about an inch of fall over that distance. Once I got that the way I wanted it, all that was left to do was make sure that I also was draining towards the pool instead of towards the planter. So using my level, I just set it across the dirt and made sure I was flowing that direction as well. And I went ahead and checked that every couple feet. It is also critical to make sure you are compacted good. I'm actually using my hand tamper that I made out of a piece of pipe and a thick plate of steel that I welded together. I went ahead and compacted it around the entire area. Looking back on this, I should have went and rented a plate compactor. This is actually a pretty critical step to doing pavers because if you don't compact the dirt, the dirt might settle over time and you might end up getting low spots or waves in the pavers. Then I got my string line out of the way and started putting my sand layer in. Now my layer of sand, I did plan on being about three quarters of an inch. It is recommended to have one inch of sand base, and that's basically to take up any gaps or voids in the dirt that is underneath it. So you have a nice smooth surface to lay your pavers on. I didn't need that much because I had quarter inch minus as my base and it was already pretty smooth. So this is where it gets a little tricky with how I had to level this sand. Now obviously this would have been a lot easier if I was just doing a square or a rectangle, however, I am not. So what I ended up doing to make this possible was I went off of my cool decking and my existing concrete and I put a piece of wood together so I could lay that on the cool decking and the concrete on the one side. In order to set that height, all I did was put a paver next to the 1x4 and then anchor another piece of wood on top of it with three screws. If you are going to use a wood screed, make sure it is pretty straight and not twisted or warped. Then using a piece of half inch tubing that I had left over from building my gate, I laid that in the sand at the level I wanted it to flow. And that allowed me to run my wooden screed on the concrete and on that piece of metal tubing to create a nice flat surface 
for the pavers to lay on. When laying that steel tube in place, I went ahead and put my level on it side to side to make sure I was flowing the right direction. And then I went ahead and put my wood screed setting on the concrete or cool decking, set the other side of the wood screed on that steel tube, and then put my level on top of that and made sure I was flowing correctly as well. If needed, I would either wiggle it down into the sand a little bit more or just lift it up a little bit and the sand would fall underneath it and then put the level on it and check it again. When using that sledgehammer to break out that concrete, it did break off a little piece under the horseshoe pit. So I mixed up some concrete and filled that in before laying my pavers. Once getting that filled in, I went ahead and marked out the paver because I did have to go around my PVC just a little bit. So I put that in place and marked it with a piece of chalk. Then using my four inch grinder with a diamond wheel that will cut masonry, I went ahead and made that cut. If you do end up buying one of these blades to do these cuts, I would recommend getting a segmented one because they cut faster than a solid blade. So I was able to borrow a masonry saw to do this project. However, when you're not making cuts all the way through the brick, these little diamond wheels for a four inch grinder work great. So one other thing with masonry guys is if you do a 70% cut and just tap it with a hammer or anything basically, usually it'll snap off pretty much where you want it. So that's what I ended up doing there because I could not get all the way through the brick with that grinding wheel because it just wouldn't reach. You can also use those diamond wheels as a little bit of a grinder to take off any rough edges from you snapping it. Once getting that piece cut, I did use concrete on this corner even though the horseshoe pit and the patio was right there to hold those in place because I didn't want sand underneath this brick and possibly just washing out into my drainage tube. I wanted my pavers just barely above level with the concrete just in case it does settle a little bit. It won't end up lower than the concrete. And like I said, the drainage and everything is flowing water wise that direction. After getting that done, I went ahead and put some pavers next to the patio and started that. And I figured I was gonna do a couple layers and then run the screed off of the pavers. However, that's not quite as smooth as the concrete to run the screed on. So I ended up pulling those back up and just continuing the screed with the concrete. I got a good portion of that done and then I went ahead and started laying my pavers. Once you get that sand nice and flat with the screed, all you have to do is set the pavers in place. I use a rubber mallet to tap them to make sure they're nice and tight. Because of the awkwardness of the shape that I was laying these pavers on, I had to screed out a bunch of material so I could move that steel tube out of the way to continue laying the pavers. Moving all that sand from the high spots can be kind of strenuous with the wood screed. So I used a stiff bristle push broom to help maneuver the material and that worked really well. Then I pulled my steel tube out of the way and cut it into two shorter pieces so I could fit it where I needed to do my next section of pavers around the curves of the raised planter. Once cutting that, I put it back I made sure where I laid the pavers, that steel tube was level with that sand. And then I made sure that I still had my fall with my level when putting the other piece of tubing in place. I kept a cup with some sand in it to fill in after I pulled the steel tubes up and placed them in different spots. It also helps you fill voids because when you pull the wooden screed across the sand, if there's any little rocks, it'll create a low spot and you have to backfill those in and then pull it across with the screed again. I got that area done and put some more pavers down. Then I relocated those steel tubes again, got a smaller wood screed and continued laying the pavers all the way up to the raised planter with any full pieces that I could do. When I got to this corner, this is the only spot that I had to lay concrete to hold that edge. When I come to an edge where I'm gonna use concrete to hold that edge so it can't wash out, this is one place where I go a little above and beyond what normally is done. I like to lift that last row of pavers and actually do the concrete under about half of the paver. A lot of times with the guys doing pavers will just lay the final layer of pavers and then put the concrete up against it. I feel it just gives it a little extra support because I've seen a lot of pavers that have been done that over time the edges start falling or sagging a little bit. So this does take a little bit more time to do because you have to pull the sand out of the way a little bit, 
put the concrete underneath there and then again using that rubber mallet I usually lay the concrete a little bit high underneath it and tap it down until it's level. I usually put that concrete about halfway up on the side of the pavers as well. I don't go any higher than that in case I want to put some synthetic grass or something else next to it, but that keeps those pavers from possibly shifting or falling off as well. And this is necessary on any edge that you don't have, like in my case, the cool decking concrete or raised planter to hold that edge in place. I also used a little bit of that concrete to go up to the top of the paver between the horseshoe pit and the paver and also use some of the cream from the concrete to fill the gaps between the pavers at the very edge. And the purpose of doing both of those is to hold your top layer of sand from washing out of the pavers. So now I'm going to get into how I made the cuts around the cool decking concrete and raised planter. So normally you don't want to do any of your cuts until the very end of laying your pavers. One of the reasons for that is as you're laying your pavers, you might come across some that have a little chip out of the corner or the side of them. And you just put those to the side and use those for the cuts. So it's not going to matter anyways. The only reason I started doing some cuts at this point is because I had to do cuts all the way around the whole perimeter of this thing. And my ADD kicked in and repetitive stuff just drives me nuts. So I wanted to split it up a little bit by doing some cuts, then laying some pavers, and then doing some more cuts. So the cuts around the cool decking and the concrete were easy because they were just single cuts. So right here you can see I'm just laying the brick above where it needs to go, taking a piece of chalk, or actually a permanent marker works better because if you have a wet saw, it's not going to wash off while you cut it. Also always make sure to wear gloves and glasses to protect you and a dust mask to protect you from the dust that comes off these pavers while you're making these cuts. So I was able to use that wet saw and that made short work of these single cuts, but you could do these with that four inch grinder with that masonry diamond bit as well. You would just cut the top of the brick, flip it over, cut the bottom of the brick, snap it off and then clean up the edge. When making those cuts, make sure you keep the extra pieces of the corners because those sometimes come in handy to fill small gaps in other places so you don't have to make an extra cut. So I went ahead and did all the cuts around the concrete. Then I screeded out a little bit more sand and laid some more pavers and then made some cuts around the cool decking. And I kept going like that for a little bit. Right here, we're getting towards the end. Now this is another one where it'd be a lot easier if you did not have the raised planter over there because you could keep screeding that excess sand just out of the way. However, since I could not do that, I had to screed it all up against the edge and then remove it. And what I ended up doing is just making it almost a little low. And then as I did the outer edge, I just added sand if needed to keep the bricks level. So as you lay your pavers, you can walk on them or stand on them as you go. You just want to try and stay off the final row or the edges so they don't possibly sag on you. So another thing when doing pavers, guys, is you always want to do your pavers in rows and you want to pick one side to go from and go to the other side. If you start doing this and then for whatever reason you came over here and started going this way, basically working your way to the center, odds are either your pavers aren't going to fit because there's going to be too tight of a gap or it's going to be a wider gap than what you want and it's going to look like crap. So you always want to work from one side to the other all the way through. Now, let's say you're doing a pattern and for whatever reason you want to start at the center, you can do that as well, but you would start from the center and obviously this wouldn't be in a circle because you're doing square pavers, but you would work your way to the outside. You would never want to work your way to the inside because again, your pavers aren't going to fit or you're going to have too big of a gap in the center. So always from one side to the other and do it in rows. That's what I ended up doing with mine, right? I started from this corner and you can kind of go this way a little bit and then this way a little bit. So I went and laid all my pavers that I could fit with full bricks, then left the spots out that needed the cuts and continued to lay the full bricks in place all the way through. And then I went back and started making my cuts. So the other thing is like me, I made that wood screed with a little lip so I could run that edge along this cool decking and the concrete. And then I ran that steel tube so I could set this lip on here and that gave me my level for my pavers. 
If you're doing just a square, let's say this is your dirt right here, this is your sand layer that you're doing, the one inch of sand. If you can dig down next to it and run a piece of wood, and the top of your piece of wood, you make level with your sand, then you just take a one by three or one by four, whatever, and you lay it on top of that and that, and that pulls your sand level with exactly what you want it to be. I've also done it where I didn't want to dig this down that far to lay the wood or my platform in the ground. So I put my platform up above a little bit, kind of like this idea here, but I screwed two pieces of wood on my screed, one on each side. Therefore I can run it to make my sand layer, but it's recessed. And depending on the, the application, you might want to do either one of those. Once I got around to doing the cuts by the raised planner, this is where the frustration level set in because instead of a single cut, a lot of these were dual cut or even a three cut. And I tried using a tape measure and just marking out the bricks and then making the cuts and getting about half of them wrong where I didn't like the cut when I went to put them into place. And I had to come up with a better way to do this or a more accurate way to make the cuts, I should say. So what I ended up doing is getting some thick paper. These were actually some old file folders that my wife wasn't using anymore. So we made those cuts to be the same size as the pavers. Then I was able to take that piece of paper, hold it over where I needed to do the next paver, use a pair of scissors to cut out the pattern, set that in place to make sure it looked good. And this allowed me to get an accurate cut the first time instead of spending 10 minutes cutting out a brick to find out it didn't look right and have to waste all that time and the brick. So basically I marked it out on the brick. Then I would use the wet saw as much as possible to make the straight cuts. Then I would continue those cuts using my grinder with the diamond wheel until I could see the groove come out the bottom of the paver. Then depending on how big of the cut it was, I would either go back to the wet saw or just continue using the grinder to finish the cut. Once I got as far as I could with the grinder or the wet saw, then I just took a hammer and knocked off the piece. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna snap off without a problem. Then just using the grinder again, I would clean up the area where it snapped off before setting it in place. Once I got that set in place, I realized that it was sitting up too high against the raised planter, so I pulled them both out, just used a screwdriver to clear out some material, set them back in place. Then it was a little low on the other side, so I added some sand, put it back in place until I got it the way I wanted it. So here's a cut that I did strictly with the grinder just to show you it can be done. And if you don't have that many cuts to do, I wouldn't even bother renting a big saw. So I went ahead and marked out the top, then I made as far of a cut as I could with the grinder. Then I continued those cuts down the side until I could see the groove start on the bottom side of the paver. Then I flipped the paver over and continued those cuts. It is also a really good idea to use some type of a clamp to hold the pavers when they get too small so your fingers aren't too close to that blade. Once I did as much of the cutting as I could with the grinder, I snapped off the piece and then just cleaned up the edge with the grinder again. If I end up doing pavers again, and I plan on using this grinder with that diamond blade for any substantial amount of cuts. I'm going to be setting up a box fan to help blow that dust away from my body. Because even though I was wearing a mask, I still had my sinuses messing with me quite a bit for the next couple days. There was also a couple cuts that I ended up putting a crosshatch with the wet saw. And I did that so when I used the grinder and made the final cuts, the little pieces would break away as I made the cut with the grinder because I did have a couple of these blocks when I was cutting them like this snap in half when I try and break off the piece with a hammer and that was really frustrating this just made it a little bit more cutting but made it far less likely for me to ruin a brick and I only had to do that on a three-sided concave cut so one other thing that might happen to you is you notice that a brick is just not sitting right and you've got pavers all the way around it already I used two flathead screwdrivers and wedged it up and had my wife help me to kind of grab it as we lifted it up so we could make that correction. I had to add a little bit more sand to that area, but you are able to get these up and out if you absolutely have to. So after all my cuts were made, 
which laying the entire pavers down and the cuts along the concrete and cool decking took less time than making the cuts along the back raised planter. Once all that's said and done, I went ahead and took one more look at all my pavers to make sure the gaps were even between the pavers. There was a couple spots where the pavers were really tight and then extra wide between them. So I took a flathead screwdriver and stuck it in the ones that were tight and twisted the screwdriver to leverage them open a little bit to even up those gaps if necessary. And I checked that all the way throughout the pavers to make sure it all looked good. The final step to doing pavers is laying a sand over the top of the pavers to take the gap up in between the pavers and finally hold everything tight together. Now it is highly recommended to use polymeric sand. Now it is more expensive obviously than regular sand, but it acts as a cement mix almost and it helps weed prevention and ants from going between your pavers, which could lead to a low spot in your pavers over time if they take enough sand out from underneath your pavers. So I figured I had about 250 square feet of pavers that I did and each 40 pound bag said it would do about 45 square feet. So in all actuality, I should have only had to use five bags. However, I ended up using six bags because of some of the gaps I had between the raised planter and the big gap that I had between the horseshoe pit and the pavers as well. Using a stiff bristled broom, I spread it out and worked it down in for quite a while to fill up the gaps. I'd let it sit for about 10 minutes and then the sand would start settling between some of the bricks and create holes. Use the broom to fill them up again and I ended up doing that a handful of times. Another thing that is highly recommended that a lot of people don't do is using a plate compactor to work the sand down into those cracks so you don't have this issue. So after spreading around the sand one more time, I went ahead and got the plate compactor and did a couple laps with it. Then I shut that down and moved the sand around again to fill in the holes where there was not enough sand. This is where I did end up using that sixth bag of sand. Spread it around, ran the compactor, then spread it around again, ran the compactor again until the gaps between the bricks were all the way filled up. I did do a couple extra laps because I think it was pushing the sand out from between the bricks and I kept thinking it was just low. So after doing that and it didn't really change the level, I went ahead and stopped and used a more soft bristle push broom to set the final height of the polymeric sand. Right here, I'm just soaking down. You wanna have your hose on shower and just lightly coat the top of it. This is where I realized that I had one low spot over by the cool decking with the water and it didn't quite flow because the cool decking actually went down towards the basketball hoop and then back up around the raised planter and I didn't realize that. One thing I did make a mistake on, you'll see this light haze of gray that is on the pavers. That's where that low spot was where the water was settling and they actually recommended taking a leaf blower and blowing off any excess water that was laying on there so you wouldn't get that haze from the polymeric sand left on the pavers. And because of this, I ended up having to use a wire brush and some water on the real bad spots to clean off that haze, basically the cement mix in the polymeric sand, and then hose it all back down again to get it cleaned off. I got very impatient because I was a little pissed off that I had to do this, and I grabbed my electric pressure washer and used that to expedite the process. It did make it go a lot faster, but I did get it a little too close sometimes and pushed out some of the polymeric sand between the bricks. Right here is that very end where I couldn't fit a paver, but you can see where that polymeric sand is basically a cement. One other thing I wanted to show you guys is if you do use a permanent marker and your cut did not completely take away the black like you can see on this brick right here, if you use some brake clean and spray it on there, then use a rag or in my case I used a wire brush to assist and scraping it off or wiping it down and it should come 99% of the way off where you can barely see it. That is the advantage to using a chalk instead of a permanent marker. However, if you're using a wet saw, that chalk will not stay on the brick so you can make the total cut. So here's the final product, guys. As always, I try and give the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.